Hello everybody, welcome to episode number two of Infinity Bottle Evolution. I'm your host EJ, and this is my trusty Infinity Bottle sitting beside me, my co-host for this series. Um, today we're excited to bring you episode number two and do another tasting and tweak the bottle a little bit. Um, episode number one, you can revisit if you'd like, that does go through the 23 bottles that were in the bottle previously. It also featured the addition of an ounce of Weller Special Reserve, as well as a half ounce of 1675, uh, which is a locally produced spirit. Um, I'm excited to see how the Weller impacts this bottle as it added a little bit more weediness. So I'm very interested to see how the flavor profile has changed. Um, right now, the bottle's at about 16 and a half uh, ounces in there. Um, two things we're going to be doing today, we're going to be tasting and then we're going to be adding a little bit more in the mix. Um, I don't have any new bottles to add in the mix, but I did decide that I wanted to bring a few bottles to add a little bit more into the mix uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, I want to fill the bottle a little bit more. Um, oxidation happens uh, with air in the bottle. So, of course, I want to minimize oxidation. I don't think we're running a huge risk uh, with the over a half a full bottle. And it's a pretty tight seal. Um, so I'm not really too concerned about air and oxidation. Uh, but just the same, why, why play with fire? Um, number two, talking about heat, uh, talking about fire, I want to bring the proofage up a little bit. Um, last time I was getting a lot of sweetness. I definitely was getting on the nose, the caramel, the vanilla. I got some butterscotch. That was probably the most unique uh, flavor profile that was kind of hopping out at me in the nose. Um, the flavor profile was definitely on the sweeter side. Definitely your classic uh, 90, 95 proof bourbon. Um, it was good. It was good. I enjoyed it. Um, today we will taste a little bit, see how the Weller and the 1675 have impacted the flavor profile and we'll get to pouring a couple bottles in here to give it a little bit more of a top off. All right, let's get going. So we're going to start off with a taste. And today I'm just going to do a half an ounce, just something to wet the whistle and really be able to know what's going on with the bottle. All right, I really love the... Um, color profile of this bottle. Um, it's got a nice dark tone. I uh, don't know how well the video is bringing it forward, but it's got that kind of like coppery sort of kind of color. It's not that whiskey sort of um, honey sort of color. Uh, so it's definitely, you know, probably got some decent proofage in there, but it's not enough for me. I want a little bit more bite. So let's change it. Let's see where it goes. All right. So on the nose, I tell you, I'm definitely picking up the fact that I added the Weller in there. I'm definitely getting a little bit more of that, like, weediness. Seems to have mellowed out a little bit on the nose, honestly. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have as sweet of a flavor profile um, in the nose, so that's, that's pretty interesting. I'm getting a little bit more ethanol than I, I did last time, so I'm interested to see what uh, a little bit of a proof adjustment will do for next time, because it very well might overpower it. But hey, that's uh, what this is all about, experimenting and having a little bit of fun. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. It's definitely developed. Uh, the Weller definitely did something to the mix. Definitely... Nope, oh, getting a little bit of that Kentucky hug going right now. Um, but yeah, definitely brought the sweetness down a little bit. The finish is definitely a little bit warmer this time. I'm definitely getting a little bit more burn, a little bit more ethanol in the mix, um, which is nice because that's definitely something I personally like in my bourbons. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. But once again, I don't want to uh, change my plan too much. Yeah, 
yeah, it's decent. That's decent. All right. Well, a um, lot more ethanol -y. You're getting your classic corn bourbon type of flavor, but I get a little bit more of the weediness sort of bourbon on the nose. So interesting and complex, and that's the whole idea behind an infinity bottle. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, make a couple additions. So I took a half ounce out. So right now we're at 16 ounces in the bottle. Today I'm gonna add another two ounces in the mix. We're gonna add four more pours. Um, once again, we are adding some things that are already in the bottle, so just kind of increasing the amount in there. Um, we're going to start with uh, Davies County today. Um, so Davies County, 96 proof uh, bottle, um, distilled and aged in Kentucky. It's a sour mash. Um, it's a good bottle. It's one that I've, I've liked. Um, it didn't blow me away, but um, it's a good bottle. It's a solid bottle. It's been hanging around the, my liquor cabinet for a a year or so. Um, you can see it's getting down to the end. So the main reason I'm adding some of this today is really because I just plan on killing this bottle this weekend. Um, so I figured I might as well add a little bit more. Currently there's a half ounce of this in the mix. Um, so we're going to add another half ounce. I'm interested to try some more Davies County products. Uh, this is the only bottle that I've currently had. This one is a, a Lux Road distillery product, so um, definitely have some nice Lux Rose. I mentioned in my last video Trader Joe's bourbon, and Trader Joe's does have a higher proof bourbon as well. I believe that one might be a, a Lux distilled product, but I, I could be mistaken. But anyways, there's a half ounce of Davies County in the mix. Going to go to one that I already have an ounce in. Spoke highly of this bottle last time. I'm going to speak highly of it again. Noah's Mill. Noah's Mill is just a great bottle. Um, it's, it's a nice proof. 114.3 proof. Um, I get a lot of flavor profile anytime I have this. Um, it's something that, you know, just really, it speaks to me. Um, it's a Willet product. Um, it's it's a bottle from Willet. Um, I prefer it over the other Willet products I've had um, that I've, I've had access to, which it hasn't been a lot. Um, I've had uh, the Runs Creek. I've had uh, Willet's Classic. Um, probably had some other Willet stuff in the mix as well. But um, I love this bottle. It's personally a staple in my, my bar. Um, I'm going to add another half ounce. There's already an ounce in there. So this is actually going to be the second most dominant bourbon or liqueur in my infinity bottle at this point, only beat out by the IW Harper 15 that there's two ounces of. Um, once again, great bottle. If you don't, if you don't know it, grab it. If you're, if you're local, if you're Pennsylvania, hop over to Jersey and grab a bottle. 50 bucks a bottle, well worth it. Um, I would, I would buy that 50 bucks a bottle all day long. I've had hundred dollar bottles that don't touch that. Some people love it. Some people don't. I'm definitely in the fan club. Uh, talked high about this one last time as well, Maker's Mark. Uh, the reason that I'm pulling the cast strength today, uh, a couple reasons. Number one, I watched a really cool video about how uh, Maker's Mark is distilled. Um, I think it was on the Eater, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but watch that just today. So kind of uh, interested to um, you know, kind of touch my maker's bottle again now that I just watched a video on them. Um, this is another high proofage. So this one, when I talked earlier about how I wanted a little bit more heat in my bottle, um, that's exactly why I reached for this bottle today. So right now the maker's cast strength, uh, 110 proof. Um, there's a half ounce in the mix already. There's also a half ounce of... Um, Maker's Mark Wilco Private Select um, in the bottle as well. So there's an ounce of Maker's in here between two different uh, bottles, but now we're gonna up that to an ounce and a half. And final addition today will be Bluegrass Distillers. Um, I mentioned last time that a good friend of mine brought me this bottle back um, from Kentucky. Um, this distillery was established in 2012. 
Um, this is a single barrel. It's a high rye. Um, so the reason I pulled this one today is because I added that Weller last time, which is a very weedy bourbon. So today I wanted to add something a little bit more on the higher rye side to kind of balance it out a little bit. Um, this also has some nice heat. Uh, I mentioned last time that this is kind of a younger bottle, younger tasting bottle in my opinion. Um, it's it's probably the proofage. This was barreled on February 16th of 2018. Um, it's bottle number 88. Um, the proofage is 113 on this, so it's it's a nice bottle. Um, aged for at least two years, so that, that'll tell you right there that um, that's why I was tasting the youngness in it last time. Um, it's not a super mature bottle, but that doesn't make it a bad bottle. Um, you, you, I personally find that with a lot of these younger distilleries that you can kind of taste the age in the bottle. Um, you kind of taste, or the lack of age there. Um, you know, I, I personally, of course, who doesn't enjoy a good 10, 12, 15 year bourbon, but new distillers can't wait 12 years to bring a product on the market. And they can't necessarily even wait four years to bring a product on the market. So I respect it all day long. You know, I, I don't have any problem with a younger bottle. I just kind of, anytime I get a, a younger distillery, I expect it to taste a little young and that's okay. That's, that's not a bad thing. Um, sometimes I want a younger tasting bourbon. So anyways, um, that's, that's what we're looking at this time. So now my bottle's up to about 18 ounces in there. So it's slowly but surely, uh, growing in size. Uh, we're going to cap it and we're going to put her away until our next video. Um, so before we wrap up today, um, I'm going to ask everybody to go ahead and do those things that we're supposed to do. Uh, please smash that subscribe button. Please go ahead and like this video. Uh, the more the merrier, the more people we can get on this channel, the better off it's going to be. I'm setting a goal right now to get 250 subscribers. When I reach 250 subscribers, I am going to give away a two ounce sample of my infinity bottle. I plan on doing uh, contests from time to time. I plan on doing uh, hopefully trades with some other infinity bottle makers out there um, so I can sample their products side by side with mine. Um, I really do want to make this channel pretty community driven. Um, I really want to get other people involved. I want to hear about other people's infinity bottles. I want to inspire people to start infinity bottles. I want to give some of my bottle away. I want to drink with my buddies and have them by my side talking about these bottles and what they're smelling and what they're tasting as well. Um, and I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to have you all along on this voyage with me. And I'm excited yeah. to responsibly sample this bottle and from time to time share it with people and from time to time add some new things in the mix and have some fun. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your support. We look forward to many, many more videos ahead of us. And once again, please hit that subscribe button for me. I uh, really need your support and, you know, making us stand out in the algorithms and making us the go-to infinity bottle series on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and drink responsibly.